and welcome back to another gear show. I'm Mike, and we're getting into some more gear. As I said, today we're going to start component level reviews, and uh, admittedly I was having a little bit of a difficult time figuring out what I wanted to review first. And then I saw this. That's right, one of the single most important pieces of equipment that I own, my Travax Link, is coming back. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Now, before I get started, I want to clarify, I'm not endorsed by Travax. I bought this with my own money. They don't even know I'm doing this. I'll send them a link to the video as soon as it goes live for everybody else to see. But it's coming back. The, the most important piece of gear that I have, and I say that because this makes me safer at work. This little widget allows me to hook up my tools so I don't lose them, so I don't drop them, so I don't potentially endanger somebody. I don't know if that's what Mark King and the crew over at Travax intended when they made this, but this served a purpose, and it's phenomenal. A little bit about Travax. They're an American company started by a guy named Mark King, who... To get an idea of Mark King, go watch his TEDx talk. I'll put a link to it down in the description. Those of you familiar with the Douglas Adams Megapode Nest Calculation story, you're going to get kind of a similar vibe. Um, so there's that. Uh, but Travax is primarily known for wallets, which I don't have one. I, uh... I carry a more traditional wallet, My in this case my ITS wallet. Um, but this little guy right here is, well, it's a key ring. It's a specialty key ring that allows you to quickly connect and disconnect whatever you need. So we're going to go to a quick tabletop and I'm going to show you some details about it. And, uh, and then we'll come back and I'll explain why I think this is a good piece of gear and what, uh, is it worth your time and money? The Link has a spring style clipped the carabiner end. The quick disconnect stud is a little bit bigger than a dime. And the push button is fairly rigid, even after several months of use. This is a Gen 1. Here you can see it on the lanyard for my Leatherman. It can be a little fiddly to put it in the socket, but I find that if you push the button all the way down, it works a lot better. Anyway, with something like this, practice makes perfect. Here you can see the different types of tools that I use. If you don't want to use the actual socket, you can just put a length of paracord and hitch to your key ring, and it'll do the same thing. This also gives you a little more versatility in how long you want your key lanyard to be. This will give you an idea of what it is to just have the socket itself on your keys. This is the GroveTech anti-rotation adapter that I told you about in my tool video. It does work. It's the exact same dimensions as a standard AR socket as shown here on a quick disconnect for an AR platform rifle. It gives you an idea of the versatility that you have with this particular system. Here you can see up close the stitching that goes into the climbing spec webbing. I don't know what it's rated for. I would imagine a couple It's a little bit of give on the plug end, but on the clip end it's a little more rigid, so it'll more likely lay flat against you. You can see now close to the captive bead system. You have to push the button in 
to get the receiver cup to slide on all the way. You can see a little bit of the surface rust I was talking about on the adapter for my Leatherman. As far as maintenance goes, you can see that I put a drop of REM oil on one of the captive beads. I do this about once a month, and then I'll just put one of the cups over it and rotate it to work the oil in. I'll also depress the button several times to work the oil into the internal mechanism. Just a drop of REM oil, actuate the button a couple of times, put a cup on it, rotate it a few times to work the oil in, and wipe off the excess and you're good to go. So that's the link up close. It is heavy duty grade webbing. It is a compression style captive bead retention system with a spring style carabiner clip and it is it's a bomb proof piece of equipment and it's one that I trust my tools and the safety of myself and my co-workers to every day uh, it runs approximately $50 for the link and I believe it's one uh, re uh, receptacle cup with the they did for a while have supplementary kits of the cups. I don't know if those are coming back or not. But ultimately, it is, it's a lightweight piece of retention equipment that you could use for anything from hand tools to, to honestly, I believe this could support a rifle if you needed it to, if, if that's what you're so inclined to use it for. Now, is it worth the 50 bucks? In my opinion, yes. High quality, um... I haven't really delved into their warranty much. The warranty at Trayvax, I haven't needed to. Um, I'll put a little blurb about whether their warranty is good. I'm presuming it is. Um, yeah, it, it, the, only, the only real problem I had was uh, on one of the cups, on one of the tools that I carried with me regularly in Florida where I would sweat because that's what you do in Florida, it got a little bit of rust, a little bit of surface rust. And that's not necessarily dinging Trayvax. That's me not paying attention to my equipment. That's me not noticing that there's the, the corrosion buildup. So whether they've figured out a coating for it or not, I don't know, but it's not a deal breaker for me. This is an outstanding piece of equipment. It's one that I highly recommend if you want retention or if you just want a unique way to carry your keys. Absolutely, apart from just the maintenance of it, which again falls to me not taking care of my stuff, this and you know, every every month or so, just clean it a little bit and put a drop of REM oil in it and it works fine. Go check out Mark King's TEDx talk. It's it's a kind of an enjoyable thing about taking on a big project and and why you should and why you should delve headfirst into something like that. Take a look at Trayvax. Check out the link. Um, as of this taping, mid April, they're taking pre-orders with uh, shipments uh, expected to go out sometime in June. I want to say, and at least for the next few days. Uh, it's only 39 to 40 bucks for the kit, the starter kit. Um, so jump on that. This is, a, a, in my opinion, this is one of those ubiquitous things. This ranks right up there with like a hero clip, the, the folding carabiner. I'll go into that in a different episode. But this is one of those ubiquitous tools that as soon as I can, I'm going to be getting more of for myself. This very easily could end up being one of those one in every bag kind of things. So there it is. Um, good piece of kit. I highly recommend it. Take care of it and it'll take care of you. And what I mean by that, and this is kind of getting back to that being better than you were yesterday thing. This makes me safe at work. Being able to retain my tools you know while I'm working in a very honestly hectic situation being able to retain my tools so I don't endanger anybody else 
makes me better. It, it makes me better than if I were to just hold on to something or if I were to just casually, I still haven't found the uh, paracord bracelet I made to stow this. You know, if I just have something looped around my wrists, there's potential for failure there. So by stepping up my game to a retention system like this, it makes me safer. It makes me more positive that, you know, I'm not endangering somebody at work. I'm not endangering losing tools at work. And, and that is something that, you know, we should all be aware of, you know, there's little things you can do every day to improve your situation. Sometimes it's just getting up and making your bed. Sometimes it's making sure you're a little bit safer at work. Do those little things. Try to do those little things every day and just try to be better than you were yesterday. We'll see you next time.